Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Sinan Ayan and I will present the work that Elia, Federico, Andrew, Fabian and I did. The goal of this paper is to highlight differences in court usage throughout history and we use natural language processing techniques to do so. We used chord progressions from 24 different composers spanning a large historical range from the Renaissance to modernism. The pieces have been partitioned into local key segments that are either in the major or the minor mode. Chords are expressed relative to the tonic of that mode. They are, they are represented by their root, expressed as a Roman numeral referring to the scale degree of the mode, and by their quality, major, minor, diminished, or augmented. Plus, we reduced chord types down to the triad. Here is an example of a line in our data. It begins with the mode and then appears the chord labels. The first step in our study is to apply word embedding to our data. Word embedding consists in transforming a word into a real valued vector. Two words that are used in similar context will be close to one another in the embedding space. For example, cat and dog will be close in the embedding space, as well as car and bus or Twitter and Instagram. Word embedding changes the representation of a word. It goes from a string to a real valued vector. This is useful because we can set the dimension of the embedding space and real valued vectors are easy to process for a computer. In our case, we have chord, chords and not words. So we denote this technique as chord embedding and not word embedding, but the process is the exact same. Chord embedding is the basis for all our future methods. From now on, we will use the embeddings as data. Clustering is a technique used to group close points in clusters. We take the previous example where we have words like car or dog. In this case, if we apply clustering in the embedding space, we will find three clusters, which corresponds to convenience, pets, and social media. It is easy to understand the intuition with words, but it may be more difficult with chords. Here we try to give the intuition for clustering on chord embeddings. We observe on the figure the probability of the chord progressions in a sample of baroque music. The probability of chord progression is proportional to the thickness of the arrow connecting the two chords. For instance, here we will expect five and one to be clustered together in the embedding space. Four will be closer to one since the arrows are thicker. Now we apply clustering to our set of data. Clustering reveals two tonal relations. First, we found functional equivalence. Functionally equivalent chords include relative and parallel chords. We also find functional differences. Functionally different chords are separated by a perfect fifth. We separated chords from major key and chords from minor key. Here is the dendrogram in major mode. On the y-axis is the different chords and on the x-axis the cosine distance between the chords in the embedding space. The relative chords that are clustered together are two minor and four major, as well as four minor and flat six major. The parallel chords are seven major and seven minor. Many functionally different chords are also, also clustered together, such as one major and five major, or one augmented and five augmented. In minor mode, the relative chords close to one another in the embedding space are seven minor and flat two major, four major and two minor, as well as four minor and six major. The parallel chords in minor are sharp six major and sharp six minor. Among functionally different chords clustered together, there is one minor and five major, or two major and five minor. So clustering chords in the embedding space reveals meaningful functional relations between many of them. Now we have a better understanding of the global use of chords, but we still haven't studied their differences or similarities among composers, and this is what we will do now. To find differences or similarities in how our 24 composers use the chords, we perform chord prediction. To do so, we separate one composer from the rest of the composers. We nominate this one as test composer. We use all the other composers to train a model. This model is a long short-term memory or LSTM. 
It takes as input chord embeddings from all these train composers without distinction, and thus learn how to, the chords are used by the train composers. Now, given this model, we want to predict which chord the test composer used given the context. Specifically, we try to predict what will be the exact chord given the surroundings. Doing this for all chords in the test composer's data will give a total accuracy that is equal to the proportion of chords correctly predicted. This accuracy then represents how predictable is a test composer given the data from all other, comp all other composers. We perform a chord prediction for all composers, and here is the results. Let's take Gesualdo, which is at the very left of the figure, as an example. We trained the model on all other composers, and we found that given their chord usage, we can predict around 20% of Gesualdo's chords in major mode. And this means that, compared to the work of other composers, Gesualdo doesn't use the chords in the same way. We did this for all composers. We see that classical composers are the most predictable from our data, followed by Baroque and Romantic composers, with Modernist and Renaissance composers being the least predictable. There is also differences within eras. For example, we remark that among Romantic composers, Wagner and Grieg are less predictable. Since each model is trained on a very similar set of data, differing by only one composer, the learned model is necessarily similar across composers. <clears throat> so seeing this much difference suggests that composers on, of the different eras do indeed use chords in fundamentally different ways. Although we make no claim here about what those differences are. We also studied the pair chord accuracy. For example, we studied differences or similarities in how composers use the five major chord revealing how different is their usage of this chord. You can read about these results in the paper. To conclude, we took data from 24 composers, we applied word embedding techniques and used the embeddings to apply clustering and chord prediction. Clustering revealed functional chord relations, especially functional equivalence and functional difference. Chord prediction revealed similarity and differences in chord usage. Future work might also include a more refined use of clustering. For instance, by applying it to chord embeddings from only a single composer in order to detect some special tonal relationship unique to that composer. We can also use chord prediction to investigate how rigidly a given composer belongs to a given artistic era. We train the model on all, of, all of composers in the same era, except one that we use as test composer. This will allow us to investigate how similar th the test composer is to, to the others of that era. Thanks for watching this presentation and don't hesitate to get in touch if you want to learn more about this.